games. Um, you know, going into the game, we had a couple goals that we wanted to you know, reach, and one was to stay healthy. And for the most part, as far as I know, we were able to get out of there with just a couple bumps and bruises and nothing major. So we'll knock on wood that we got through spring practice and uh, the spring game today without uh, any major injuries. Two, you know, what a, what, a, what a great day to play football and, you know, having it on Maryland Day, you know, seeing it was a pretty good turnout for, for what we've had here in the spring. So, you know, I appreciate the fan support, former players and a bunch of recruits that all came out to uh, kind of see the unveiling of the 2019 Turk football team. So I was uh, pumped with the, the environment that was created today for our players. You know, I thought we were able to throw the ball a little better with the way that win was going, I was concerned that, that the win would become a factor and, and, and we'd be forced to run the ball a bunch and you know, with our three running backs and being the depth issues that we have right now before we get these freshmen in here, you know, obviously obviously a little concerned to wear the running backs out. But again, you know, I thought both quarterbacks operated okay. Obviously Tyler, you know, voted as the MVP of the game by you guys as the media. It's kind of what we saw most of the spring from him. He's a guy that has the ability to operate the system, uh, makes pretty good decisions and choices. I also thought Max did some good things, but um, you know, obviously didn't lead this team to the win. So um, excited about the turnout. I, I like the energy and effort that our team gave today, and uh, we're excited to move forward and start the next phase. You know, finish up this semester strong academically, and then get into our uh, summer program as we prepare for the 2019 season. This is Mason Viner. Listen to the Young Terps podcast on CapitalSportsBlog.com and TerpTalk.com, the number one rated Maryland sports podcast. Well, not just today. I mean, we, we had, as I've said before, we've had the ebb and flow of one side of the ball playing well and then another side struggling and we had a couple of scrimmages where they both did good things. Um, I think today is a, a byproduct of them getting more and more comfortable with the system. Um, I thought you did a good job calling it for your team. Um, you know, I thought, you know, that third down call you made was awesome. I, mean, I, I wouldn't have made that call, but um, pretty good job for you today. You know? What's the difference in coaching from behind the quarterback on the field and then coaching on the sideline versus being up in the box? Well, obviously, it's the best view of the house. Uh, secondly, I can yell and scream at the quarterback before the play and kind of tell him where he should be reading and where to go with the ball. No, um, you know, obviously on the sideline it's tough because you don't get the view and see it, which is why we have some coaches upstairs and some guys down. You know, today everybody was down on the field, which is – not probably the, the most uh, convenient thing for a play caller on either side of the ball because of the view you get. But, uh, you know, I, I, I just think for me as a play caller, I like being upstairs in a more controlled environment. You know, that sideline, as, as your coaches that coached in the game today can see, a lot of stuff happens down on that sideline. And as you try to make adjustments and make decisions in the heat of the battle, for me, I always appreciated being upstairs. And it also got me further away from the head coach when I made a bad call. Well, all I can say is maybe call Irv Smith from Alabama and ask him if we threw to the tight end. I mean, I think the Minnesota Vikings drafted him in the second round. It's probably a pretty uh, similar system, pretty similar system. But no, the tight ends, like anything else, tight ends and running backs, and most of the offenses that I've tried to coordinate or have coordinated, they'll always play a role in it because they're the guys that create matchup issues. We feel like we've got a few good tight ends in our program. I know we got some really good running backs that can catch the ball out of the backfield. And you saw that today with Fleet and Ant and Javon all catching the ball and also doing a good job running it. But then you saw our tight ends and all those guys, they have a really good understanding. They kind of are the guys that can create matchup issues. So we're going to play and use all of our weapons in this offense. You'll see the ball distributed to where we're looking and charting how many touches guys get because we want to get our best players the ball. I would refer Jack Litch Law Group to anyone that I know because of their professional touch and they get the job done. They get it done timely and they do it right. As you just saw, 
Our clients have trusted us. We need to reward that trust, and we have, with great results and great service. So call the big dogs right now. Don't wait. Find us online at bigdogssmallfirm.com. You know, obviously losing the punter from last year, you know, we're trying to figure that position out, but we got some schematic things. We didn't show anything. I mean, obviously, this wouldn't be a great day to be a punter or a kicker, but I thought they all did a pretty good job, minus maybe the first couple of punts where, I mean, we weren't even rushing. Like I told the punter, like, I would just hold the ball and wait till the wind stops. Well, it was like, we weren't rushing you because it becomes a field position deal, especially in this game. So. I'm not concerned because we're going to do some scheme things to kind of help our punting situation until we can identify and figure out who gives us the best chance to change and flip the field position with the, the ability to punt. Uh, replacing uh, Trey Blossom is obviously a factor this, this year coming in. I mean, Andy Ely looked like he took a step. How do you feel about that position after the spring? Yeah, I mean, you know, that's one of the positions that we have some depth issues. You know, Isaiah Davis was out this spring from having shoulder surgery. But like you said, you know, the thing with Trey, he was a tremendous leader around here. And, you know, you can't, you can't account for that type of leadership that he provided and his work ethic from what I hear. Um, but no, I felt like Ace really stepped up this spring. You know, he was voted our you know, linebacker of the spring award and shown him some great leadership, a really physical guy, has good length, has the ability to play the run. And I, I just, I, I feel like he's taking that next step. And you got to build on it uh, this summer. And, uh, Obviously, go see him play that way once we start the season. Um, without being able to rush the quarterback, was that tough play to judge how the defense played? They had, they were rushing the quarterback. Well, I'm just saying, but um, they, they had yellow jerseys. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, well, it's tough both ways because the quarterback took off and ran, and they blow the whistle if it's a one-hand touch too. So it goes both ways. So I told the defensive line, don't cry about if it was a sack or maybe it was just like. We're guessing that they make the tackle, and I've had some quarterbacks that when you put them in live jerseys, all of a sudden there's no sacks on sacks either. So I think they go both ways with it in terms of you know quarterback's ability to be live or not live, with them having some favor in them also with it being a detriment. You know what? I, I thought that the uh, I would have liked to see the white defense play a little. I mean, early in the game they gave up the explosive plays and. And then they look like they settled down in the second half. And, you know, we just can't be a defense that gives up big plays. I didn't see a lot of missed tackles, but it's hard until I watch the film to see it. Um, but no, I thought overall it was a competitive game for the most part. Uh, coach, with the offensive line for the Reds, were you satisfied with their performance for the day? I thought all, all in all, for the most part, both sides, offensive lines, did a good job of keeping guys away from the quarterback. Um, it's hard, again, like I said, until I watch the tape, it's really hard to evaluate if somebody played well or not. But just look at the ways the quarterbacks were able to operate and look at some of the big runs we had, you would think that we, we did some good things on, the, uh, on both sides of the ball with the offensive line. Yeah. Coach, the autograph session is going to take two more. I'm ramping in. What did Jalen Duncan do this spring to be an award winner, and who called the play throwing the ball to him today? Well, you know, each team was awarded one trick play, so the, 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 uh, what team was he on? The red one. The, the red team offensive coaches put in that trick play. It was a throwback to the tackle. Uh, I thought it was a well-designed play. It showed some athletic ability, which is a good thing. Um, you know, what made him win the award, that was a award voted on by you guys, right? So, well, you saw him in practice a little more than we did, probably. So we did, so. but the award was for the day, not for the spring. Yeah. That was the offensive lineman MVP, basically, of this game. And I guess that's what they voted on, right? They voted on by you guys. Does he get to you? I mean, he got traded. Does he get to <laughs> No, he doesn't get the. They start on one team, and even if they flip back and forth, whatever team they start on is who they uh, is whether they penalized or rewarded. Yeah, with no time off today, is that just precautionary? No, nope, off today. Is that precautionary? Or yeah, it was. Simple? I mean, a little more precautionary, but there, there, there is. You know, we actually sent him for an MRI during the, I mean, Wednesday or Thursday because we just didn't see him get better, and the MRI showed that there's no structural damage on. The but just a little bit of swelling in there, so we just need to let the swelling calm down and we work on uh, 
risk putting them out there today and him not be able to protect himself or move the way he's moving. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.